A schema for horizontal dials is a set of instructions used to construct horizontal sundials using compass and straight-edge construction techniques, which were widely used in Europe from the late 15th century to the late 19th century. The common horizontal sundial is a geometric projection of an equatorial sundial onto a horizontal plane. The special properties of the polar pointing gnomon were first known to the Moorish astronomer Abdul Hassan Ali in the early 13th century and this led the way to the dial plates, with which we are familiar, dial plates where the style and our lines have a common route. Through the centuries artisans have used different methods to mark up the hour line sundials using the methods that were familiar to them. In addition the topic has fascinated mathematicians and become a topic of study. Graphical projection was once commonly taught, though this has been superseded by trigonometry, logarithms, slider rules and computers which made arithmetical calculations increasingly trivial. Graphical projection was once the mainstream method for laying out a sundial but has been sidelined and is now only of academic interest. The first known document in English describing a schema for graphical projection was published in Scotland in 1440, leading to a series of distinct schema for horizontal dials each with characteristics that suited the target latitude and construction method of the time context. The art of sundial design is to produce a dial that accurately displays local time. Sundial designers have also been fascinated by the mathematics of the dial and possible new ways of displaying the information. Modern dialing started in the 10th century when Arab astronomers made the great discovery that an omon parallel to the Earth's axis will produce sundials whose hour lines show equal hours or legal hours on any day of the year. The dial of Ibn al-Shatai in the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus is the oldest dial of this type. Dials of this type appeared in Austria and Germany in the 1440s. A dial plate can be laid up by a pragmatic approach, observing and marking a shadow at regular intervals throughout the day on each day of the year. If the latitude is known the dial plate can be laid out using geometrical construction techniques which rely on projection geometry, or by calculation using the known formulas and trigonometric tables usually using logarithms or slide rules or more recently computers or mobile phones. Linear algebra has provided a useful language to describe the transformations. A sundial schema uses a compass and a straight edge to firstly to derive the essential angles for that latitude, then to use this to draw the hour lines on the dial plate. In modern terminology this would mean that graphical techniques were used to derive in and from it basic calculation using a large sheet of paper. Starting at the bottom a horizontal line is drawn, and a vertical one up the center, where their crosses becomes the origin O, the foot of the gnomon. A horizontal line draw a line which fixes the size of the dial. Where it crosses the center line is an important construction point F. A construction line is drawn upwards from O at the angle of latitude. Using a square, a line from F through the construction line is drawn so the cross at right angles. That point E is an important construction point. To be precise, it is the line Fe that is important as it is length. Using compasses or dividers the length Fe was copied upwards in the center line from F. The new construction point is called G. The construction lines and Fe are erased setting out a dial for 52 degrees north. The three initial lines, marking the latitude, laying out length, and copying to G on the vertical, a tangent, laying out the length, a tangent of a sign, laying out lines of length, where H is an integer zero. 5. Such geometric constructions were well known and remained part of the high school curriculum until the new maths revolution in the 1970s. The schema shown above was used in 1525 by Dura is still used today. The simpler schema were more suitable for dials designed for the lower latitudes, requiring a narrow sheet of paper for the construction, than those intended for the higher latitudes. This prompted the quest for other constructions. 
horizontal dials. The first part of the process is common to many methods. It establishes a point on the north-south line that is simphi from the meridian line. Early Scottish method do restart with the basic method shown above. From GA series of lines, 15 degrees apart are drawn, long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. The significant problem is the width of the paper needed in the higher latitudes. Setting out a dial for 52 degrees north, the three initial lines, marking the latitude, laying out length, and copying to G on the vertical. Benedetti Benedetti, an impoverished nobleman worked as a mathematician at the court of Savola. His book which describes this method was De Nomonum Umbrarum Qua Solarium USU published in 1574. It describes a method for displaying the legal hours, that is equal hours as we use today. While most people still used unequal hours which divided the hours of daylight into 12 equal hours but they would change as the year progressed. Benedetti's method divides the quadrant into 15 degrees segments. Two construction are made, a parallel horizontal line that defines the tan H distances, and a gnomonic polar line GT which represents sin phi. Draw a quadrant GRB, with 15 degrees segments. GR is horizontal. A parallel horizontal line is drawn from P, and X made where it bisects the 15 degrees rays. GX is the latitude, T is the crossing point with P. GT is the gnomonic triangle. The length GT is copied to the bottom of E giving the point F. The hour lines are drawn from F, and the dial is complete. Bernadetti included instructions for drawing a point gnomon so unequal hours could be plotted. Quadrant with 15 degrees segments. Constructing the rays. Finding the origin. Adding the hour lines. Dial face. Clavius method Rome Italy. The Clavius method looks at a quarter of the dial. It views the horizontal and the perpendicular plane to the polar axis as two rectangles hinged around the top edge of both dials. The polar axis will be at 5 degrees to the polar axis, and the hour lines will be equispaced on the polar plane and equatorial dial. Hour points on the polar plane will connect to the matching point on a horizontal plane. The horizontal hour lines are plotted to the origin. Draw the gnomonic triangle, lying on it hypotenuse. On the small side, draw a square, with 15 degrees hour markings. The dial plate is constructed with compasses taking its sizes from the triangle. The hour lines 12, 3, and 6 are known. The hour lines 1 and 2 are taken from the side of the square. A diagonal is taken from 12 to 6, and lines parallel to this drawn through 1 and 2, giving 5 and 4. The morning dial is a reflection of this. Stir ups method from GA series of lines, 15 degrees apart are drawn, long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. Setting out a dial for 52 degrees north, the three initial lines. Marking the latitude, laying out length, and copying to G on the vertical. From G casting on the horizontal. The actual hour lines 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Construction lines removed. Finding the angle for 4 and 5. Drawing 4 and 5. Construction lines removed. The completed dial plate for 52 degrees north. Stirrup. Bettini method the Jesuit Mario Bettini penned a method which was posthumously published in the book Recreationum Mathematicarum Aperia Nova Sima, 1660. Draw the new nomic triangle with the hypotenuse against the meridian line, and phi to the bottom. The other point call M, the right angle call G. A horizontal line is drawn through M. This is the equinoctial. A circle centered on M with a radius MG is drawn. 
G2 and G3 are the intersections of the circle and meridian. In the top quadrants, points are marked each 30 degrees. Two are named P, Q. Construction lines are drawn from G2 and G3 through P and Q. The intersections with the equinoctial are marked. To finish, the hour lines are drawn through these points from C, and the dial squared off. Bertini's method 1660. Gnomonic triangle. Circle marked each 30 degrees. Construction lines. Hour lines drawn to the origin. The dial plate. Leybourne William Leybourne published his Art of Dialing in 1669, or with it a six-stage method. His description relies heavily on the term line of chords, for which a modern dialist substitutes a protractor. The line of chords was a scale found on the sector which was used in conjunction with a set of dividers or compasses. It was still used by navigators up to the end of the 19th century. Draw a circle, and its two cardinal diameters, EW, and SN, O is their crossing point or origin. Using a scale of chords or protractor, lay of two lines, 0A, that is 52 degrees from OS, and 0B, that is 52 degrees from O, at P, which is called the pole of the world. Now connect E to A, it connects A. This point is important as it is where the meridian crosses the equinoctial circle. The point C, A, and W lie on the equinoctial circle. The next task is to use this information to locate the center and to draw the circle. Use a construction line to join A and W. At the center point, raise a line at right angles. Where it cuts the SN will be C, the center of the equinoctial circle. Use C to draw an arc from E to W. It will pass through A. There is now a semicircle passing through E and W, and the equinoctial arc passing through E and W. Divide the semicircle into 12 equal parts, i.e., 15 degrees angles. Mark with a construction point. A ruler joins O with the points on the semicircle. These lines cut the equinoctial arc. A series of unequal points are created. A ruler from P takes a line from these markers back over the semicircle. Where it cuts it will be the hour point. These hour points are unequally spaced. The hour lines are drawn from each of these hour points to O the origin. The origin is the foot of the style which is cut at 52 degrees. Ozan Arms method may all this method requires a far smaller piece of paper, a great advantage for higher latitudes. From GA series of lines, 15 degrees apart are drawn, long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 and represent the points. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. The lines through 9 and 3 are extended to the Wii line and a line dropped orthogonally from 9 and 3 to the Wii line. Call the crossing points W and E. From W and E two more lines are drawn 15 degrees apart. These cut the verticals creating the hour points 7, 8 and 4. Lines taken from 0 to these hour points are the hour lines on the final dial. Setting out a dial for 52 degrees north. The three initial lines. Marking the latitude, laying out length, and copying to G on the vertical. From G casting on the horizontal. The actual hour lines 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Construction lines removed. Encyclopedia method This method uses the properties of chords to establish distance in the top quadrant, and then transfers this distance into the bottom quadrant so that is established. Again, a transfer of this measure to the chords in the top quadrant. The final lines establish the formula equals this is then transferred by symmetry to all quadrants. It was used in the Encyclopedia Britannica 1st edition 1771, 6th edition 1823 The gnomon is drawn first against the north-south line. In doing so, a diameter at 5 degrees to the vertical is drawn, its reflection will also be needed. The circumference is marked off at 15 degrees intervals in the top quadrants. 
Chords parallel to the horizontal are drawn. Draw the gnomon and diameters at the target angle. Mark the top quadrants at 15 degrees angles, and connect with chords. Transfer the half chord length to the lower radius, and draw across. Raise verticals. Draw our line through the intersections. Resulting dial for 52 degrees. The Salawar method, the Dom Francois Bedos de Seller method, otherwise known as the War method from GA series of lines. 15 degrees apart are drawn, long enough so they cross the line through F. These mark the hour points 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 if you take just 3 and represent the points. The center of the dial is at the bottom, point O. The line drawn from each of these hour point to O will be the hour line on the finished dial. If the paper is large enough, the method above works from 7 until 12, and 12 until 5 and the values before and after 6 are calculated through symmetry. However, there is another way of marking up 7 and 8, and 4 and 5. Call the point where 3 crosses the line R, and a dropper line at right angles to the base line. Call that point W. Use a construction line to join W and F. Walk all the crossing points with the hours lines K, L, M. Using compasses or dividers, add two more points to this line N and P, so that the distances MN equals ML, and MP equals MK. The missing R lines are drawn from O through N and through P. The construction lines are erased, setting out a dial for 52 degrees north. The three initial lines marking the latitude, laying out length, and copying to G on the vertical, from G casting on the horizontal. The actual hour lines 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Construction lines removed, constructing the 7, 8, 4, 5 lines, marking the 7, 8, 4, 5 lines. The completed dial plate for 52 degrees north, Bedos de Sella. Nicholson's method This method first appeared in Peter Nicholson's A Popular Course of Pure and Mixed Mathematics in 1825. It was copied by School World in June 1903, then in Kenneth Lynch's Sundial and Spheres 1971. It starts by drawing the well-known triangle, and takes the vertices to draw two circles at radius in phi and tan phi. The 15 degrees lines are drawn, intersecting these circles. Lines are taken horizontally and vertically from these circles and their intersection point is on the hour line. That is tan kappa equals obsin t, ab cos t which resolves to sin phi. Tan T. Draw the NS line and the O line crossing at the origin O. At a convenient point in the first quadrant join the axes with a line set at the target angle. This forms the basic triangle AB. Set the compasses at length OB and inscribe a circle. Set the compasses on AB and inscribe a concentric circle. On both of these circles mark out the 15 degrees angles taking the lines vertically from the inner circle, and horizontally from the outer circle, mark each of the intersections. These are on the R lines. Connect the intersection points to the origin, the basic triangle, the circles, the 15 degrees measure, the intersection points, the completed dial. Sophia this was an early and convenient method to use if you had access to an astrolabe as many astrologers and mathematicians of the time would have had. The method involved copying the projections of the celestial sphere onto a plane surface. A vertical line was drawn with a line at the angle of the latitude drawn on the bisection of the vertical with the celestial sphere. Bibliography. Dural. Clement V. Geometry. Publisher G. Bell and Sons Limited. B. E. Acute D. O. S. De Sella. Francois. 4-3. La nomenique pratique au lap de tracer les cadrons solaires avec la place grande prade cision. Paris. P. 459. Retrieved 12 July 2015. Davis, John. Engraved decoration English horizontal dials. Bulletin. 26. 48-52. ISSN 0958-4315. Retrieved 3 July 2015. Sawyer, Fred. Searles Dialing Scales. 
Compendium 2, 5, Sawyer, Fred, Horizontal Layouts 1 to 4, Compendium 19, 33, Sawyer, Fred, Horizontal Layouts 6, Compendium 19, 36 to 7, Sawyer, Fred, Horizontal Layout 7, Compendium 19, 39, Garnella, Alessandro, Sawyer, Fred, Ed, Horizontal Layout 8, Clavius Method, Compendium 20, 31, Garnella, Alessandro, Sawyer, Fred, Ed, Horizontal Layouts 9, Benedetti Method, Compendium 20, 37, Garnella, Alessandro, Sawyer, Fred, Ed, Horizontal Layouts 10, Sophia Method, Compendium 20, 39, Garnella, Alessandro, Sawyer, Fred, Ed, Horizontal Layouts 11, Still a Method for the Horizontal Sundial, Compendium 21, 13, Powers, Patrick, Sawyer, Fred, Ed, Horizontal Layouts 5, Laybourne's Method, Compendium 19, 4, War, Albert E. Sundials, Their Theory and Construction, New York, Dover, pp. 38-39, ISBN 0486229475, access date equals requires, URL equals.